Hi, welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views, Opinions. I'm going to do a review on my new camera, which is not a new camera, it's just my new camera. It's actually now in its third generation, but what that's enabled me to do is to buy the first generation um, for less than half the price it was originally. And I think it's uh, an absolute steal and a bargain. And just because it's three generations old doesn't mean to say the original wasn't very good because as it turns out, this is a stunning camera. And uh, here we are with the Sony DSC RX100. So we'll just quickly unbox the Sony RX100. There you go. I'm not gonna go through all the gumph you get in it. It's, uh, it's a camera, you get a battery and a charger with it and you know, that's about it. So as a size comparison, between it and this is the 45 1.8 lens on the um, GX7. Now if I just tilt them up like that and show you. So it is a much smaller, you know, this really is a pocketable little camera. I still love my GX7 and I take that out whenever I can, but as I say, there are occasions when I just want a, a camera in the pocket, but I still want the image quality. So, and the only thing I've done extra to this is I've added the little grip um, because I've had cameras like this before with this smooth front and um, I had the Panasonic Lumix GF3 I think it was and whenever I tried to hold it, it it just fell out of my hand so I knew I would need a grip so I've bought the Sony one and uh, stuck it on and that enables me to hold this single handed very securely, absolutely brilliant and um, two handed, it's lovely and comfortable, really nice. So, bearing in mind this is a camera that's what, probably two or three years old now, we're on the third generation, the RX100 Mark III, yes, that's a, you know, it is a better camera. It's limited, it's got a shorter focal length on the lens, it's only a 24 to 70, this is a 28 to 100 equivalent with the, uh, I think it's a 2.7 crop factor on the, uh, the lens rather than a two times crop factor for the Micro Four Thirds. So the sensor size is not that much smaller than the Micro Four Thirds. And it's miles bigger than you would have in a, like a, a Panasonic Lumix TZ 40, 50, 60, whatever they are now. So what compromises have I had to make by getting the first generation? Well, there's obviously no hot shoe, which the Mark II has got. And there's no EVF, which the Mark III has got. Well, the Mark III has got an EVF and a flash. Um, the Mark II just has a hot shoe, and then you can add a EVF onto it, but I think it was stupidly expensive, probably more than I've paid for this camera. But what I've noticed with my GX7 is I've, I've not, because the screens are so good now, I've not been using the EVF very much. Very rarely do I use it on the GX7. So I thought, well, I don't think I'm gonna miss it so much on a little camera like this, and that has proved to be the case. I haven't had it long, I haven't taken many photos. I will pop a few up at the end just to show you. Uh, the other thing you don't get, which you do on the, the Mark III, is the flip up your screen. It's just a fixed screen. Again, it's a compromise, it's a small camera. I paid 220 pounds for it, and this was 550 new. So you know, you've got to bear that in mind. There are gonna be compromises. I already knew that there were issues with people saying, the, the, the control ring on the front is a bit on the laggy side. Um, the low light performance obviously isn't as good as Micro Four Thirds, but you know it. I'm already ready for that compromise. So those things for me aren't issues. What I want is a good image. I want a camera that works, reacts, um, quick to focus, accurate to focus. Uh, and this, the autofocus, I don't think it's quite as snappy as the uh, GX7 in use. Um, nothing technical here, just in use. It doesn't feel as snappy as the GX7, but it's really good. It is really good and it's, um, it's, it's lovely. I mean, these blow me away, but this is really good. Controls, yeah, there's not a lot of controls. I've had people, um, I've seen reviews of people moan about this rear control dial. Um, for me, it works absolutely perfectly. I've got no issues with that at all. It's an all-metal body, um, so it's going to be hard-wearing. The dials all click nicely. The zoom function works well. You've got one function button on the back, that's all. And that brings up um, about seven, up to seven different options. And I've got um, ISO, uh, 
picture modes, white balance, uh, dynamic range mode, and a couple of focusing modes, me sorry, focusing mode, metering mode, and then flash mode. Menu system is not great, but it's not horrendous. I'm used to it now. It's it's a bit like my old NEX6, but um, not as bad. Um, it w works okay, and to be honest, I don't need to go into the menus that often. Your four-way buttons here, three of them you can sort of assign. Um, I've got one assigned to the focus mode, so AF AFS, AFC, manual focus. And I've shifted the uh, flash function, which would normally be on the dial there, onto the function button with the seven options, because it's not something I'm going to use very often. So that works really well. The uh, pressing down gives you, um, it depends what mode you're in, the down button. So I've just left that to default. Um, and on the left, you've got your drive modes, which is single shot, uh, multiple shots, bracketing, self timers, all those types of things. Talking of, um, speed of shooting it's it's not particularly quick it will do a 10 frame per second burst without autofocus which is fine if you're panning or if you've got someone stationary well not stationary but in the same position moving and you want to to, to catch their eyes open or the look or whatever works fine in normal use the speed is about i think it's about three or four frames per second it is fine for a, you know for a point and shoot works really well the front wheel you can set this up to pretty much anything you want and you can have it for zoom for manual focus this isn't a manual focusing camera and there's no need for it to be really so um if i switch to manual focus that becomes the focusing ring um that's fine but i don't see i'm ever going to use manual focus on this to be fair the other thing you can set it for is iso or aperture um, but then to be honest it's like wheel of fortune if you do it for aperture iso and it's like oh where's it going to stop who knows and um, the, the best option i ever use it for is the exposure compensation because there's no dedicated exposure compensation dial one of the things i usually use most especially if i'm not bracketing uh is exposure comp and so i just have it on the dial and it works absolutely brilliantly you get a little click um it does it in third stops and that works absolutely perfectly and that's what i've got it set to and i've sort of stuck with that now so you can set it up to absolutely anything you can have it set for picture modes all weird and wonderful things um, I find that absolutely fine. Um, the flash, you can't sort of remotely pop up. It just pops up when it needs to, but um, I generally have the flash deactivated, so I'm never actually going to pop the flash up, which is a nice feature. You've got a couple of memory call functions uh, on the top here on the mode dial. So you can, um, you've got three memory recall um, options. So I have like a black and white and uh, a vivid one and the, the second one i haven't actually got set up for anything yet i tend to use sort of just flick it into black and white you obviously your video mode video is really good and the image stabilization is really good works absolutely beautifully quite limited on uh frame rates and things but to be honest i just leave it set on um i think it's mp4 mov whatever it is and uh, 1080 and it works fine I, you know i'm not going to use this for creative video i've got other cameras that i could do that with so just for a, a, a little quick video the actual quality is fantastic um works a treat you've got a panorama function on the mode dial which i really like i don't like having to delve through menus to find the panorama mode so that's really nice then you've got your scene modes which are macro and all, all sorts of different things on there you've got an intelligent auto and a superior sort of super duper intelligent auto which to be fair i'm not really going to use i tend to just leave it in a program auto mode and then just use the dial on the back um to adjust um you know the uh, aperture and shutter and i can obviously do me uh, exposure compensation on the dial on the front so with the two dials in program auto mode i can pretty much change everything iso i've just set to auto but i've limited it to 3200 you're looking at black and white in 3200 anything color up to 1600 is okay i try and keep it below 1600 if possible which is pretty much the same as like the GH7 and the GH4. You don't really want to be pushing these too much. You, you can if you need to in certain circumstances, but it, it depends on the picture and your use of the picture. Sometimes it, it's quite a nice effect to to have um, a lot of grain. So, you know, again, it is what it is. 
Ultimately, the image quality is fantastic. It's the best image quality I've ever had from a compact camera, bar none. And bearing in mind that the sensor, although they've gone from a, a, um, a normal sensor to a backlit or back illuminated sensor on the new versions, which is gonna improve your um, ISO, your sensitivity, probably by maybe a stop. Um, so I'm still getting the sort of the same image quality that you're getting in the new 700 pound or 800 pound Mark III version, but I've paid 220 quid for this. Um, so I think I've got a really good deal. I think it's a really good bargain. And if you can pick one up like I did, a brand, mint in the box, um, very little use whatsoever, then I think this is an absolute steal. Um, I can't really say anything negative about it. The lens, just quickly, as I said, it was equivalent to a 28-100. Um, and it's an f1.8 to f4.9. By the time you've got to about 35mm, it's already up to 2.8. But when you think your average kit lens or compact camera would be pushed in 5.6, 6.3 or whatever it is. Um, so it's it's pretty good. And at the 25, 28mm wide angle, you've got an f1.8 lens, which is great for indoor shooting. You got the hundred mil, which is okay for um, you can you can get a reasonable shallow depth of field with this, not massively, but you can get bokeh and blow out the background, and it looks nice, and you can do it if you know how to do it. Uh, so yeah, I, it, you know, creatively, it's a great tool, um, and I love it. I've had a couple of small cameras. I had the Pentax Q, but again, that's an interchangeable lens camera. I love the camera, smaller sensor than this, great pictures, but. It just didn't suit what I really wanted it for. Um, screen on the back is beautiful. Um, I'm just trying to I'm trying to look for things that are, are bad about it. I suppose the only negative is they put the HDMI socket right next to the tripod. Not that I ever use a HDMI, but I think that might be an issue for some people. Um, but but not for me. Uh, battery life seems to be fantastic. I've charged it once since I've had it, and it's still showing full battery charge. So uh, I'm getting good battery life out of it. No issues whatsoever. But um, so far, absolutely love it. I, did, I didn't mention that lens, it's a, it's a Carl Zeiss lens, so you're getting really good optics on this as well. So forget about your aperture and things like that. It's good optics as well, and that does make a difference, on, um, especially on these sort of small cameras. Image-wise, I'm just using JPEGs, and I've been editing a few JPEGs just to see how far I can push them and what I can manipulate about them, and I've been really impressed. And I, that is my test for a camera. If I can really move the JPEG file around, let alone the RAW file, then you've got a good image to work with and you can do good stuff with it. If you then use your raw file, you can get even more dynamic range. You know, you can bring out more um, from the shadows and things. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So um, this has been GRVO TV, G's reviews, views and opinions. This is just my initial review on the Sony RX100. The first